Since 1920, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics has been advocating for high quality mathematics teaching and learning for each and every student. As thousands of mathematics education professionals converge on our nation's capital for the NCTM 2023 annual meeting and exposition, NCTM TV is here covering it all. Welcome to Washington, D.C. and to NCTM TV. I'm your host, Autria Godfrey, and all this week, we will be taking you beyond the meeting. This week, we are helping you lay a strong foundation for the upcoming school year and beyond. We sit down with NCTM president Kevin Dykema to hear what priorities are taking center stage all this week. Yeah, so we're going to identify three big areas that need to be considered in math education. The what content do we teach? What structures do we need to put in place to ensure that every single student has access to high quality education? And what should good quality instruction look like in the math classrooms? Plus, we kick off our tour of the organizations and programs finding innovative and new ways to make math count. Math teaching involves a lot of instruction and making sense of new ideas. It also involves students practicing skills. With technology, students can get immediate feedback as they're working, and teachers can get data to help make decisions. It's an exciting week ahead here in Washington, and we want to make sure you never miss a minute. You can always find the latest NCTM TV episodes on the TVs placed throughout the convention center, on the in-house channels at several of our partner hotels, on the homepage of the NCTM website, and on our YouTube and X pages, formerly known as Twitter. We kick things off on this first day with the programs and organizations finding new ways to help students. EMINS is an educational program known for prioritizing learning-focused practices over technology-driven instruction. Let's see how this method promotes positive student outcomes. The mission of EMINS is to raise student success by designing professional learning that is based in research and innovation and can be practically applied to the classroom. EMINS emphasizes student-centered learning by making it the entire process. Students are, first of all, what learning is all about and teaching is all about, and EMINS understands that in their model. The EMINS instructional model has four components, powered by technology, high quality lesson design, community of learners, and authentic learning is that fourth piece. Teachers are given a roadmap um, using quadrants to teach students as a facilitator, and students become direct leaders in their learning path, essentially. We will work with administrators, instructional coaches, curriculum coordinators, anyone that really needs to be a part of a team to help them be successful. We're always looking for that need and it always gets back to how can we help students, how can we help teachers. Turning now to assistments an innovative platform that empowers educators and students alike, offering an immediate feedback system to allow teachers to tailor math assignments to students' individual needs. The future of, of instruction is going to involve technology that enhances the human interaction between teachers and students and between students and students. And Assistments was designed to do exactly that. The impact I've seen on my students is they're actually excited to see the data every day. You know, if, if they walk in and I don't have a graph up because they didn't do a problem the day before, they're kind of bummed about it. They really like seeing that data every day and seeing how we did. And it just helps me as a teacher know um, kind of when I can move on, when I need to, you know, reteach something. Um, and I think it just, they just like to see it. Assistance does kind of feel like a clone of myself because practice makes permanent and perfect practice makes perfect. So I would not want someone to pour a lot of time into one thing only to find out that it's been done wrong the entire worksheet. That feels like a waste of time for the student and it's really discouraging when they can go back um, or just be stopped in real time in that moment saying, hey, this isn't quite right. Assistance is gonna stop them, help them find their problem, get back on track, and continue forward in a way that doesn't waste their time and it doesn't solidify the misconceptions that they might have.
And we get started today by taking a closer look at some of the policies and processes that need to be examined to ensure student opportunities, not only during, but after their K through 12 education. And here in studio with us now is NCTM President Kevin Dykema. Thanks for your time today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, you have a very exciting address happening today, your presidential address, and you will be touching on some of those topics that I just mentioned. What can people expect? Yeah, so we're gonna identify three big areas that need to be considered in math education. The what content do we teach? What structures do we need to put in place to ensure that every single student has access to high quality education? And what should good quality instruction look like in the math classroom? So I'm very excited to share some ideas and excited to hear some follow-up afterwards. Wonderful, well, let's talk about what folks can expect during this year's meeting. The theme for this year's meeting is creating spaces for change through community. Where did that idea come about? Yes, we have a wonderful program committee that sat down and said, what, is, what are the big things? And we recognized we're not meeting the needs of every single student, so change needs to happen. But change can't happen by one person. It needs to be within communities so that we can bring it back to our local areas and then develop communities there to truly impact math education and impact the students. All right, and uh, how will attendees see this theme incorporated all throughout their sessions and meetings this week? Yeah, so when you look at the strands, a lot of the strands talk about change and talk about building community. We're also launching some affinity groups so you can find other like-minded people, whether it's, you know, you're looking for a rural, whether you're looking for a large urban, a wide range of different affinity groups. So stay tuned and you'll hear a lot more about affinity groups coming up. You talk a lot about local communities. What do you hope attendees will take home with them back to their local communities from this week? Yeah, so I think one of the positive things, one of the most energizing things is just the energy in the, in the conference. And you get fired up and you recognize, all right, here are some things that I can do back in my local area. And then you find some other people in your local area and say, hey, I got this great idea. Let's start to implement this idea in our local setting. Wonderful. We appreciate all of your work as president of NCTM and best of luck this week. Thank you very much. Heading to the West Coast now to the California Math Project at California State University, Sacramento. Building thinking classrooms is empowering both educators and students for future success in mathematics. 80% of students aren't impacted in high school classrooms, middle school classrooms, because teachers are just asking them to mimic instead of asking them to think, and students disconnect. Our professional learning with the California Math Project is around different ways that students could solve problems, whether that's using a graph, using a table, writing an equation, and that each method is valid. And so in that, we can train teachers to be stronger in each of those methods so that they can bring that out in their students. We actually teach in the manner that we are hoping that they're gonna do with their students, walk in the walk, getting the teachers up so that they could feel how it is for their students, which helps them. We're really focusing on that building thinking classroom strategy of visually random groups and being up at whiteboards. We're trying to make it so every child gets rich mathematics, not just some of them that are the first and the fastest, but how do we make access points multiple times so that everybody can engage in the way that they can engage. The Phillips Exeter Academy's Mathematics Institute is at the forefront of reshaping the future of mathematics education. Through its workshops, seminars, and research initiatives, the Institute is not only empowering teachers to transform their classrooms, but also catalyzing a broader movement toward a more dynamic and inclusive mathematics education landscape. EMI, the Exeter Math Institute, is a, a space where we can bring teachers together and to think about our teaching and our practice. The Exeter Math Institute began in 1992 and we realized that we could share practices with teachers. And so the first institute was actually on this campus and we realized it was really more beneficial we could reach more teachers if we brought it out across the nation. And so our, our mission really is to provide time and space for teachers to, to come together and think about mathematics and teaching. Mathematics education is essential because it is at its basis um, about making logical arguments, reasoning, and, and then when the way we do it, we add in collaboration and uh, problem solving, and I think that is just essential to human beings.
Well, from networking opportunities to new technologies to inspiring sessions, there is a lot to look forward to this week. Dr. Peter Ely is here in studio with us now with a preview of what's in store. Pleasure to have you this morning. Thank you, and Archie, I'm glad to be here. Well, let's talk a little bit about how exciting it must be to see all of your hard work come to fruition. I mean, this has been a year in the making. Yeah, um, working through COVID and having the, the many meetings, a lot of our colleagues on the committee, we actually didn't even see each other until we have gotten here at the conference. Um, so a lot of Zoom meetings and now to be able to see people and just be able to have that physical connection and being in the same room with somebody just changes the conversations. So yes, it's a very exciting to see everybody and everybody's gotten here safely and just seeing the excellent work that's being here on display during the research conference. Wonderful. Well, so what are some of the things that are in store for attendees this year? Well, we always it's always nice to be in the Capitol. Um, so one of the things this year is that we're trying to be more advocates and using our work from research to practice and, and, and being able to impl implement that work as we um, go forward and also being able to um, have our research sessions again. Um, we've been, the conference has changed over time um, due to circumstances that beyond our control. But now with the, um, the poster sessions and being able to talk and engage with students and student researchers and, and their uh, mentors, um, it's just really good to be back in that space and be able to see multiple people and uh, multiple research projects at one time virtual versus the virtual space where things were a little bit more limited. So are there any key sessions or events that you would like to highlight or anything that st stands out to you that you would really like attendees to take note of? Um, yes, of course, the opening sessions are always um, great to be there. Yeah, um, Joan Mundy um, was is the opening session and I'm su sure you're gonna, um, she has a lot in store for us there. And then also the poster session is always the time to really engage with the newer researchers. I think that's critically important because not only do we want to ask good questions and find out what's the latest and greatest, but we also want to encourage that pipeline of new researchers. I remember my first time coming to a conference with my advisor, Dr. Um, Lee Stiff, and um, just being there and being able to engage and see all these people that you've been reading about for years and now they come by and maybe ask good questions about your work. It's very encouraging and also encourages you to continue to do that work and take that feedback and some of that constructive criticism to continue um, your work. And then next year you come back and you can be even better. It's really a full circle moment. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for all of your hard work with planning this conference and best of luck this week. We appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you, Autry. Based out of Boston University, Promise is a six-week summer program designed to encourage high school students and teachers to explore the creative world of mathematics through a supportive community of peers, research mathematicians, and visiting scientists. The Promise family of programs is a collection of three core programs, or the core element is a program for high school students. They come from all around the country. Uh, and in recent years, they're coming from other parts of the world. Promise for Teachers is a program for teachers in the summertime. We're trying to give them an experience of learning. And by thinking about how one learns, one's better prepared to help one's students learn. I think the fact that Promise is free and provides a stipend to teachers is crucial for the program to be viable for most at least most public and private school teachers. The third, and I think very important component, is what we call the Pathways Program created in order to give us avenues for reaching into underserved communities. We give them problems and the students will explore and they'll learn from it. Everybody is treated as if they were mathematicians and we try to provide experiences consistent with that point of view. That's a wrap on day one of NCTM TV. We hope you've enjoyed hearing all of the exciting offerings that are on tap for you this week and learning new and exciting ways to help students master mathematics. Remember, if you missed any part of today's program, you can always find the latest NCTM TV episodes on the TV's place throughout the convention center, on the in-house channels at our partner hotels, on the homepage of the NCTM website, and on our YouTube and X pages, formerly known as Twitter. That does it for us today. We can't wait to see you right back here tomorrow. Go have a great one.